not enough addresses in version four? Is that connectionless? It's connectionless, yes. It's it's connectionless, right? That means what? Uh, data can be out of order or not guaranteed delivery. There is no guarantee of delivery, right? And the, uh, the other problem is error reporting. So IP itself does not, re I mean, any communication we could have problems and errors, right? So major problem with the IP that there is, is does not have error built in error reporting. So for that, we use a supporting protocol, which is the Internet Control Message Protocol, and that's the function of it. All right, that's the function of it. So let's try to take a look how it works. All right, and um, what kind of things it could do. Okay. So you are able to see this slide, right? The first slide, right? Yes, the first one. Yes. That's good. So, all right. So we're going to just discuss the rationale of the existence of ICMP. And then we'll show how ICMP message are divided into two categories. One is error reporting and the, our, the other one is the query messages. So there's two functions for that. Then we discuss the purpose and format. So format and the purpose of the error reporting message. And then we discuss the purpose and format for the query messages. All right. And then we'll show how the checksum is calculated for the ICME message. Then we show how debugging tools are used like the ping all of you have used ping before right the ping all right and trace route and how they are built using the icmp okay so let's take a look at the in the ip protocol has no error reporting we agree on that there is no error reporting or error correcting mechanism it's connectionless so what will happen if something goes wrong what will happen? Officer. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you, but I think it's the same stuff. It did not like. Same page? Only... Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's really weird. Okay. All right. So again, uh, <laughs> I have to repeat what I said again, but that's fine. All right. So uh, as we said, the protocol, the, the IP protocol has no error reporting. There's no error reporting. All right, and no error correcting mechanism. So the question is, what will happen if something goes wrong? All right, what we do? Uh, what will happen if the router must discard a datagram? It's overflowed. Okay, what will happen? Just discard it and don't report it back to the sender. Okay, so there's many things that need to be to, to be reported, but unfortunately the ip does not take care of it so the icmp protocol will take care of it right so let's take a look where is it located and how it works so again as you see in here this is the ip packet remember the arp and we know the address resolution protocol how exactly works we explain it in the first half of this lecture and we know exactly how the ip protocol works we explained it last week Today we'll talk about the IC, now we're going to talk about the ICMP, all right? And this is for the error handling, all right? For the error uh, handling. So it's exactly like this, all right? So it's like a separate packet. It's not part of the real data transmitted. It will be used when there is reporting, when there is an error, Okay, it, it does not carry real data, all right? It's used to report or to um, um, uh, query uh, something, as we will see. So the ICM, uh, ICMP message, it will be loaded in the IP data. You'll have IP header, and then it will gonna go to the frame data, 
it will be sent as a frame all right again it does not have real data it has like reporting something problem is a report like a messenger okay it does um, a, a reporting for the errors and if there is an errors that it will be reported all right so we said it report messages right all right let's take and there's five types of messages it reports five type of messages it reports so IP messages are divided into two broad categories. The first one is error reporting messages. And the second one is like query messages, query messages. So this is number one, uh, number category, and this is number two category. So the error reporting messages report problems. What do you report? Okay, what, what do you want to report in here? You want to report when you have a problems, right? That a router or a host, which is the destination, may encounter when it processes the IP packets. All right? Problems, different problems. So this is for reporting problems. All right? And the other type, which is two in here, is a query messages, which occur in pairs. What does it mean in pairs? It's like request and reply. You query something and you get reply. So to summarize, before we move on, what is the function of ACMP? Okay, messaging. It's a messaging. There is two types, two broad types of messages: error reporting and query messages. All right. We're gonna take a look at all of them in a second and how they work. All right. So, uh, so help the host to uh, and uh, or a network manager to get specific information from the router or another host. Also, hosts can discover and learn about routers on their network, and routers can help a node redirect a message. All right. So it has a function, um, which is a key. So let's take a look at the message format. The error reporting messages, the query messages, and the checksum for the integrity. All right. So in here, the ICMB messages, as you see it in here, okay, there is two categories. Remember, we said there's two categories. The first one is error reporting messages, and the second one is query messages. So the error reporting messages, okay, which are one, two, three, four, five. So destination and reachable. So when the packet tries to go to a destination, which is a reachable, it will report a message type 3. Source quench. The source cannot handle all the data. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the destination cannot handle all the data. And it's receiving a lot of data from the source. So it will, message will go to the source. It tell it, please slow down. Please slow down quench slow down because we cannot handle so this is the second type which is type 4 type 11 time exceeded we'll explain it remember like we have TTL time to live how it works TTL the, 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 the TTL time to live whenever the data goes from one network to another network what will happen to the TTL will get reduced by one so you start five, becomes four, becomes three, becomes two, becomes one, becomes zero. Once it becomes zero, what will happen to the packet? What will that happen? That means that the packet, new packet will come. And it gets dropped? It gets dropped, right? And that's it? We drop the packet, that's it? Shouldn't we report that to the destination, to the source, that you have sent a packet and your packet was dropped? So who does that job? The ICMP. Using a message type 11. Okay. Then, parameter problem. Okay. What if you send a packet and some information in the header is wrong? So some parameter is wrong. So what do you do? This is an error. Just let it go. 
and the packet will not get to the destination. So what you do when the router discover that you know some parameter in the packet is wrong, it will report it with time 12. Then redirection, redirection, redirection. Uh, so for example, you, when you send the data, it will send, if it's not in the local, it's gonna go to router, router one, let's say. But let's say route, router one does not have the destination uh, host. So it will be directed to router two, for example. All right. So this redirection will be reported to the sender. Oh, you send it to to me. I am router now, router one, but the host is not part of the network I'm connected to. So I had to send it to another network. For your information, the right network for this destination is so and so. Okay, redirection. All right. So it like manages all the issues and all of them happening in the network in a very nice way. Also, there is a query messages, which is echo request or reply. So what is echo? It's like, you, what is echo? Echo like when you send a voice comes back, right? So if you need to, to know if there is a connectivity between this host and this host, what do you do? You send an echo, a message. And if it comes back, that means means there is what connectivity. All right, that's the echo. And there is also a this is for eight for for send and zero to reply, thirteen to send, fourteen to reply, and timestamp request or reply. So you need to know the timestamp. So these are the different packages and that we have. So let's take a look at the general format for the ICMP message. Again, from now, now on, when we talk about IP, there is IP format. When you talk about ARP, there is ARP format, right? When you talk about TCP, there is TCP format. When you talk about UDP, there is a UDP format. When you talk about ICMP, we'd like to know how is the message formatted as well, all right? So it will have um, eight, uh, 8 bits for type, 8 bits for code, 8 bits for checksum. And we don't have to explain checksum anymore. What does checksum do? It's like CRC. What does it do? It checks the integrity of the header. Okay, that means it did not change while it transferred. Okay, so the ISMB message, as we said, has 8 byte header. 8 byte header okay and variable size data section so this data section is a variable size okay so you have the header and this is the rest of the header what is the size of the header is 8 byte header and the variable size of data um, uh, section the first four bytes are common to all so the first four bytes as you see them in pink in here are common to all uh, 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 ICMB uh, packets. They are de de they define the type of the message. Okay, as you see it in here, the type of the message, and um, uh, and the code field specifies the reason for a particular ma message type. So this is will specify the reason, and the last common, which is the checksum. We already explained that checksum. The data section, as we said in here. Um, uh, um, it has the error message and carries the information for finding the original packet that had the uh, uh, error. All right. So let's take a look at in here. Okay, ICMP always reports error messages to the original source. All right. So usually when there is a packet sent, there is a source address there is a destination address, right? It could report to the destination or it could report to the source, right? But it's always, 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 always reports to where? So To the original source, to the original source. That's a question in your final, okay? That's a question in your final. All right, so just always remember that. So now, remember when we said there is an error reporting, there is five types of error reporting. We already discussed them. 
the destination and reach pool we'll take a look at it source equation we'll talk about it time exceed we'll take a look at it parameter problems you know there's some error in the in the header or something what do you do you have to act and there is also red direction all right so uh, contents of the data field for the error message all right so what does the data field let me go back in here what we are talking about this is the data section so remember the type the code the checksum are common in everywhere in all the icme messages this header could change depends on the message and the data of course will change all right so let's talk about the data here and and okay so so the contents of the data field for the error message the received datagram it will have an ib data it eight bytes you know the header in here the ip header okay so what we do what we do in the icm icm icmp packet we'll take the ip header we put it here and we'll take the first eight bytes from the data and we'll put it here we don't take anything from the rest all right and then we add the icmp header again one more time we need to build the IC, uh, icmp packet all right so we'll take the ip header as it is we'll take the first eight bytes from the data we'll put it in here the rest we remove and then we build the icm cmb header where is the icmp header i don't have to keep repeating that's it in here all right all right then th this will be sent ip datagram so we'll have eight bytes we have the ip header we have the icmb and then we have the ip header so everything now in here will be created as a, a as a datagram again okay so this will be as like the data for the data for the the data for the ip the okay so this ip header different than this ip header is here is like ip header inside ip header or i'm sorry ip you know data inside the ip header so this ip header in here is different than the one in here all right it's like box inside a box so there is a box we call it a datagram we put it inside the same box which is another datagram all right so the data in here is different than the data in there so um so this is the error okay so um okay um all right um so let's take a look at the five the first one is destination and reachable okay let me go back in here remind you so what is the first one is destination and reachable we'll talk about it then we'll talk about source quench then we'll talk about time exceeded then we'll talk about parameter problems then we'll talk about redirection okay let's take a look how how it's it's formatted so let's start with the first one which is destination and reachable format so the type is a three remember what we said the format in here in the ip format is always the same right this is always the same right okay so you have the type code the checksum always there So my question, who are I going to pick? Just I want to make sure people are awake. Uh, so let me check, let me check. Ryan, are you there? <laughs> Mm 
Ryan is not there. Uh, I'm, I'm here. Ryan. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, no problem. So, okay, do you think? Well, just think with me, and you don't have to give the right address, uh, not the right, uh, <laughs> the right answer. More than I need you to think with me, little bit, right? So we are saying that you know you have the destination slower than the sender so the destination it could be a router sends a message quench to the source and tell the source quench right right <clears throat> does that does that you know always help um I mean, I guess if it, that message gets there too late, maybe they already lost some of the data? Sure. Yeah, what other problems you could have? Uh, I guess if that message doesn't get, if the quench doesn't get delivered correctly, then it keeps going? <laughs> no, it got there. It, okay. Okay, what other problem? So we are um, here, we are here, let me help you out. We are here assuming there's a destination and there's a source and this source is the only one sending to this destination but that's not the true right mm -hmm. usually like you have many nodes right let's say this is a router the destination is a router and there is like node a node b node c node f node x sending so like when you're sending like a quench okay you it might be a slow a very slow node let's say node f it's law. It's the sending law, but it's not the problem. The problem is there's too many nodes are sending. You agree? Yeah. That's why the destination is always busy. You agree? Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it's it's not all the time it's gonna help you when you send the quench. Okay. So what will happen? Okay. What will happen as a following? So the source will send a quench message. It will slow a little bit. Okay? So let's say we mm -hmm. have 10 levels. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So it's like sending at level 10. It receives that quench. It go to level 9. Right? Mm -hmm. it, and then sends the data. If it receives another quench, it's going to go to level Eight. Eight, right? And keeps doing that until it stops receiving the quench. So the question, how much slow you could go? All right. So the first time it will go a little bit slower. If it does not receive any more quench, then it's okay. If it receives it, go a little bit slower. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you here, that it's not perfect. That's why we use... A transport layer for bitter mechanism for flow control but this helps this helps at least in here if there is a lost data okay so one source sequence message is sent for each datagram that is discarded due to the congestion so whenever a router decrements a datagram with a time to live value so that's the third now we are talking about the third one third messaging which is time exceeded all right so remember the router keeps decreasing the time to live uh, as it goes past what will happen if it goes to zero and the router is discarding the packet so what we'll do we have to let the original original source know about it so when the final destination does not receive all the fragments in a, in a set time it discards the received fragment and sends the time exceeded message to the original and we explained that last time right there's two scenarios where time exceeds the first time when the time to live decreases to go to zero so what will happen to that packet will be discarded right the other scenario is like we explained in the last lecture when we did a fragmentation so what we'll do with a fragment the packet let's say into five parts 
all of them will go where? To the destination. So what will happen if one fragment is lost out of the five? After a certain time, it will throw everything. Either you receive it all or you throw it all. All right? So if that happens, the destination, what should do? It should report back to where? To the source. To the source. To the source. It tells the source, hello, thank you so much for sending me this packet. I understand it has to be fragmented into five parts. I received part one, zero, part zero, two, three, four, but fragment two I did not receive. I waited for so and so time, and then I have to throw everything or discard everything because I did not receive it complete. That's it. So there's two times time exceeding reporting that needs to happen. That's why we have the codes zero or one, two times, right? And the same thing that for the time exceed reporting. So in the time exceeded message, code zero is used only by routers to show that the value of the time to live field is zero. And the code one is used only by the destination host to show that not all of the fragments have arrived within a set time. And with that, I would like to start the discussion with you. All right. So... And let me pick somebody. Okay, let me pick Sajad. Are you there, Sajad? All right, he's not there. So, how about... Um, uh, Badr? Yes, prof yes. yes, Professor, I'm here. So, let me start the discussion with you. Actually, I need to have another person with you. Okay, and this, if it's good if you put your video, let me see you. And let me sure. pick Arzu, Arzu and Badr. That question for you. I need you to discuss this. So what's the question? The question is, all right, so this is already designed, right? Now, that's how it works, right? All right? Uh -huh. So for you as a network engineer, why is it so important to know how things work? Or let me put it this way, a car. All of you have cars, right? All of you drive, right? You have yes. to engineer your car. You don't really need to know how engine works to drive it, right? I mean, you could drive it another 25 years without knowing how engines work, and you're fine. You're using it, right? So my question for you, why is it so important to learn all of this? It's already designed, we are using it, it's behind the scene. As a as network engineer, how this could help us? Are we wasting our time there? Troubleshooting? Yes, troubleshooting. That's an excellent question, troubleshooting. When you are a network engineer, and when you have like a problem in your system, at that time, you are not going to look at the high level. You will be looking at the packets level. All right, packets level. And then this packets level are, are in, what, in, in, what, in what format? In binary. Binary. All right, so you'll be able to understand the mechanism. So what is this process when you do troubleshooting? I mean, we're trying to find a problem. What we name this process? What we call it? Uh, error detection? Nope. Is that what you're asking? Solve the problem. So control, uh, error control? Nope. Something simpler? <laughs> we call it reverse. The flow, flow control? We call Reporting. It, we call it, Did I? I'll give you the first word. We call it re <laughs> reverse. Huh? Reverse, reverse, reverse engineering. Or reverse engineering, okay, yes. Good. Reverse engineering, right? So, so that's what distinguishes good engineer from bad engineer. I remember at um, in uh, in uh, 
I think in 1999 or 2000, I was asked to do a consulting. And believe it or not, at that time, it was in Windows NT at that time. So a company, like a major company in Shilton, uh, which became like, a, 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 you know, a, a super company in the Ford and the storage. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the NAS started where you have the, 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 the transfer of data over the fiber and storage over the fiber. Uh, network address uh, uh, storage. So what they did when they start the backup or the transfer data, okay, uh, it just starts smooth, 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 and after a while, after a while, it shuts down. The server shuts down completely. You have to report it. All right. So I mean, it took them for a long, and they was in the team who discovered the problem. The problem that at that time, when you learn about the TCP/IP, there is something called window. I'm going for a flow control, so um, uh, there is something called um, a sliding window. So, <coughs> sliding window is how many packets you could send at one time, and this is sliding window either shrinks or increases, and because the data was transmitted is very high the window keeps increasing 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 to cope with the transmission until it's like fill fills all the ram and the ram has no more space and shuts down the whole machine so the fix at that time was very simple it's a patch for microsoft that you know yes the window or the sliding window has to increase you'll learn about the sliding window later okay increases all right but should not increase forever it should have a maximum that does not exceed the size of the RAM. So needed a person to, to debug and debug and debug and understand how the system works and works and works. And that's what makes you guys different from technicians. You are here getting, getting like a, t a degree in, you know, master's or PhD, and you are not a technician. Okay, you are not a technician with a screwdriver okay fix it or break it right okay so you are here an engineer that you try to understand and not only understand what's going on but also propose because if you are doing your thesis you will do some research you'll try to analyze the protocols how it works you could come with the new ideas and so on and so forth that you could propose in a form of a paper or a journal or whatever or patent or all right, so don't underestimate yourself, don't underestimate the importance of understanding how things work. All right, and by the way, that's what differentiates a person works in the same field, but this person makes like 100K and the other person makes like 300K. Both have masters, both have the knowledge, both work in the same field, but some are like technicians and the others are real engineers all right the other the, the first one you could bring 200 of them easy all right but the person who has the deep understanding and learning is a very hard to get okay very hard to get so try to scale yourself and you have to escalate with the knowledge and the way you look and when you read this book or other books just look deep how things work. Try to connect your engineer. Your engineer. You need to understand how things work. All right. And that's what would differentiate a good engineer from other engineers. Good engineers, they sleep asking questions. They dream about the answers. They wake up with answers. Okay. That's their lives. Their life like this. Always think about solutions, problems and solutions. Either they are thinking about the problem, creating a problem to solve, or solving an existing problem. All right? So always, always, always think of yourself this way. If you think that you are getting a degree to be a technician, you really don't need, need a master's. You don't need a bachelor's even. All right? So, so it's just very important to understand how things work. I hope that, that you believe me on that. If you don't, then you don't. I mean, um, you don't have to. <laughs> All right.
so the fifth the fourth one is a parameter problem message thank you uh better and uh, Arzu. you did not answer but that's good all right <laughs> a parameter problem message can be created by a router or a destination host all right so like we said you're sending data and there could be an error parameter i be wrong type is wrong something is wrong in so what do you do if the router receives a, a packet or datagram this way what does it do just ignore it don't report back nope we have to report back and that's what we do so type 12 goes zero and one and of course it will point where is the error in that packet you see it's a little bit different in here all right so in here also the fifth one is the redirection so let me go back just refresh your memory because i know that at the end of the class we forget a lot and we get lost um that's not a problem so we spoke about destination and reachable we spoke about source quench we spoke about time exceeded two types and we spoke about parameter problem and now we're going to talk about redirection okay redirection of the data so let me give you an example for redirection all right all right all right all right so redirection so look in here so host a would like to send data to uh, send data to uh, host b is there a problem with that nope there's no problem right should not be a problem right okay so host a should send it to router 2 and router 2 will figure it and will send it to this network right but what will happen if router a instead of sending it to router 2 send it to router 1 so router 1 will figure it out we know that b is not part of its network so first of all router 1 will, will send a redirect uh, a redirection um, uh, redirection message to the a tell, oh, tell, you send it to me i'm not the right person however i will help you out so the router one will go and send the IP packet to where? To the R2. Router one could have done that without informing A. There is no problem. But what will happen? That A will keep doing the same mistake. So rather, it will send it to router two and will send the redirection message to router A. So the next time it will directly, so you know, this will go directly, but next time now host A instead of sending it to to you know to router one it knows now it has to send it to router two as simple as that very smart very clever as you see the system is really robust and it's built in a very robust way so a host usually starts with a small routing table that is gradually uh, you know augmented and upgraded or updated so one of the tools to accomplish this is the direction message. So that will help to building that. So that's the format for redirection message format, right? All right. And there's the code 0 to 3. So code 0 redirection for a network specific route code one is for reduction to a host specific route and code two redirection for a network specific route based on the specific type so there's different types all right so that's what is for re so redirection message is sent from a router to a host on the same local network all right so now let's go back we said for icmp we have how many categories two one is error reporting and the other one queries we finished the five for error reporting now there is two for queries right what is a query question and an answer what's your name my name is so and so 
question and answer, right? Queries. All right, so we'll move on and we'll uh, hear, uh, okay, the first one is echo request message. And this is to check the, 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 the destination is live. So you send a message, echo, okay, and you'll see the reply if it comes back. Echo reply message is sent by the host or router that receives an echo request message, an echo request message. And all of us have used Bing before, right? You know, echo requests and echo replay messages can be used by network managers to check the operations of the IP protocols. All right. And you, all of us have used the Bing. So the type is eight or zero, whether it's eight is for the echo request and this is for the echo reply. All right. And there's identifier and the sequence number. So sequence number one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. All right. And also it could be used for timestamp and a timestamp reply. So in here, request for the timestamp. So original timestamp, receive timestamp, and transmit timestamp. All right. So. Uh, Okay, if I do bing 8.8.8.n, which is the Google DNS, bing, bing, all right, so you see in here, binging 8.8.8 .8 with 32 uh, bytes, and reply from this, and the bias is 32, the time is 25 milliseconds, and the time to live 113. Okay, so that means the maximum number of raptors could go through is 113. All right, so it kept going, and then at the end in here, the Bing statistics for 8888 packets sent four packets, one, two, three, four, received four packets, and the lost zero packets, the percentage of lost is or the loss is zero. So the approximate round type times in milliseconds, so the minimum is 21 milliseconds, all right, and the maximum 25 milliseconds, and the average is 23 milliseconds, all right. So this was done. The ping is written using the, IC, the ICMB. The other, the, other, the other protocol is route, uh, trace route, Trace RT, I think, in Windows, and Trace Route in Linux. Trace RT, so 8.8.8.8. All right. So now it will, it will go through the routers. How many routers between here and the Google? So over a maximum of 30 hops we have a uh, uh, 30 hops so the first one is in at my location is 192.16.11 okay this is request is timed out okay then it goes to the next one and keeps going so Okay, the first router, the second router, the third, the fourth, and keeps going. Okay. You see charter in here, and that's my provider. Then went through this router, and this IP address in here. Okay. And then finally, it came to the DNS Google, that Google, which is 8.8.8. .8 .8. So how many routers between me and the Google is 11. It's 11. All right. And this is like the average time. Okay. The average time. And this is the destination, the, I, the address of the, the router. All right. So this is using the ISMB. Okay. So timestamp request and timestamp replay messages. Um, 
can be used to calculate the round trip time between source and destination machine even if their clocks are not synchronized. The timestamp request and the timestamp reply messages can be used to synchronize two clocks. We could use them to synchronize two clocks in two machines if the exact one way time duration is uh, known. And then here to give you some examples, you know, um, um, the debugging tools, the ping, I already tried them for you, the ping and trace route. So in here you're binging like an address, and you see in here 64 bytes uh, from this IP address, the sequence 1, 2, whatever, then the time to live 62, and the average the time, and then here calculates the average uh, for you. So you could try it. And then this explains the trace route we just explained to you. So when you trace route from a host A to host B, right, it will tell you how many routers went through. Remember that, you know, it could have different routes, all right? So it could go through router 1, router 2, and then the destination, or it could have different routes. So if you run it multiple times, it could give you different results. So trace route, and this is in Linux, or trace RT in Windows. So as you see how many hops it went through, it will report back to you. This is like a few examples that you could take take a look. All right? Okay. Um, then the last thing, it talks about uh, um, the ICMB package. You know how to write it in the code given the idea of icmb you can handle the sending and receiving of icmb messages we present our version of icmb packet so if you need you know uh, to write uh, the input module and the output module uh, so this is the icmb uh, module you have the input module the output module and this is like you know it's like a simulation for what we have explained right so in here um, uh, ICMB packet, all types, it goes to input menu, uh, results of error messages sent to the protocol, then here ICMB packet replies and achievements, okay, and then this is the upper layers, this is the IP below layer, okay, and uh, so this is like this direction, this is like this direction from upper to lower or from the lower to to the upper and you could you know that's a nice assignment I could give you to write a code to simulate ICMB but I'm not going to do that all right so that's what we what I wanted to cover in this uh, lecture so we covered two important uh, protocols right you agree they are very important uh, which are um, um, the ARP and the ICMP, right? All right, so um, uh, I, I have created the assignments, two assignments for you. So you need, uh, uh, I think, five and six, which are due next week. Uh, um, so again, ARP is, the, um, um, is address resolution protocol. When you have a switch like this, all right. Professor, can you uh, share? Professor, you you're not on um, sharing your screen. Please. Now. Yeah. Yes, it's working fine. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. So when you have a switch, for example, as you see in here, and you have. Uh, let's say node 1, okay, and node um, 2, right? And um, so this will have an IP address, all right, in the same class, all right, an IP address, or in the same network, right? So logically, when they communicate, they communicate with their IP address, right? So there is a source address and destination address. But in the physical wire, they have to know the hardware address. That's the only, the only way of communication. All right. Think about yeah, the logical address is like is like your name, and the physical address like your address. So if somebody like try to send you an email, and put your name in here, 
or mail and put your name in here, it will never get to you unless you have the physical address. The same thing in here. So you have to have the physical address to be able to uh, communicate. To be able to communicate, you have to have the physical address. Without the physical address, nothing you will be able to, to do. All right, and we already explained that, I think, in Chapter 3 or 4. All right, and we said that the RP, the, the ARP is used for that. So let's take a look at it, how it works. All right, um, so again, uh, what are the objectives of this class? We're going to make a distinction between logical address, which we did many times, and, uh, and the physical address or MAC address. We'll describe how to, uh, the mapping of the logical address. We need to map logical address to physical address. So, for example, you need to map a mail address to the name of the person. You need to map home address to the name of the person mapping, right? So, this, uh, this logical address equals to this physical uh, address, all right? And this could be static or dynamic. Then we'll show how the address resolution protocol ARP works. All right, and then we'll uh, show the proxy ARP uh, where you could um, um, do ARP for multiple IP addresses in one shot. And we're going to skip ATM. ATM, like all technology, so let's not worry about it for this purpose. And then we'll take a look at ARP software package just to show you how it works. All right. All right. So, uh, addressing mapping. So, delivery of the packet to the host or the router requires two levels of addressing, the logical and the physical. And there is a third level, which is the port number, right? But now we are talking about the logical, which is like the IP address, all right? And we have IP4 and IP6. And the physical address, and we are talking about the MAC address, all right? Or the Ethernet address physical address, whatever the physical address. And we said it depends on the technology used. So if it's Ethernet technology, then you are using Ethernet address, which is 48 bits. If it's token ring, then it's a different technology. If it's token bus, different technology. So of course, we need to be able to map the logical address to the corresponding physical address. And that's the whole uh, goal and uh, purpose in here. All right. Now, uh, this can be done using either static or dynamic mapping. So you could have in your computer like a table and it, it has like a, a two columns, all right? One is uh, for the logical address and one for the static address. The problem is that, you know, this could change. So having a static system always a bad idea because everything could get uh, changed, all right? so. Uh, there's static mapping, not used. There's dynamic mapping. That's what we're going to use. All right. So anytime a host or a host, and you know, host, host is like what? Host like a computer, a printer, right? A scanner, any host that could get an IP address, right? and could ex exchange the data over the internet. It could be any IoT device, a host or a router, and by now we understand what is a router, uh, has an IP, data, um, uh, IP datagram, and again, I mean, we said at the layer, th uh, layer 3, what we call the data datagram, and this will be sent to another host or router, all right? So to be able to do that, to send it to the next hop, we have to have, we have to encapsulate this datagram uh, into a frame, all right? And in the frame, and remember that, let me just refresh your memory, we have seven layers, right? We have the physical layer, right? And then we have the data link layer, and then we have the network layer, right? So the network here layer, we are using the IP address, all right? In here, we are using the MAC address or the hardware address, all right? So we need to be able to encapsulate, we need to be able to encapsulate the, the data, all right? We need to be able to encapsulate the data 
uh, the, uh, the, uh, the data into a frame and the frame needs a hardware address for the next hop all right if you don't know it you have to get it and that's what we use ARP uh, for it so ARP accepts the logical address from the IBA protocol maps the address to the corresponding physical address and pass it to the link layer so let's take a look in here how it works all right so we're going to take at the packet format at encapsulation operation and the proxy ARP and the proxy ARP all right so what is the position of ARP in the TCP IP it's a network protocol so as you see here is the IP protocol in the network layer all right and the ARP is a protocol work in the same layer so if you have a logical address in here you need to convert it to physical address so this IP packet needs to move down okay to the frame right so it's gonna go in here and here we're gonna have a header and we're gonna have a trailer okay header and at layer uh, at, at layers right the back so this has to include the physical address we don't have the physical address what we have to do we send the IP address to the ARP the RP will get us the physical address all right will get us the physical address all right so it's located in the network layer as you see in here all right so let's take a look in here how it will work how ARP will work okay so system a in here system a would like to get to, would like to send the IP to the message to node B all right so from system A to system B system A does not know the physical address of B it cannot it can't send anything to it, it does not have a physical address I would like to send Muhammad al Jamal a gift Christmas gift right his IP address is Muhammad al Jamal. That's his logical address. But how could I send him the the, the 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 gift to his house? I don't have the address. So I know the logical address. I don't know the physical address. I have to get it first. So what will happen? System A will do a broadcast looking for the physical address of a node with IP address. Okay, this is the IP address of my system B. It will do a request, which is a broadcast so it will send a broadcast this machine will request it oh i'm looking for the physical address for this for this ip address i'm looking for the mom of this lost child all right then the same message will go in here i'm looking for this the physical address of this ip address and again i go in here i'm looking for this uh, i'm looking for this physical address for this ip address so what this machine will do will ignore it oh this is this is not my IP address will ignore it this will ignore it then when it goes here oh oh this is my IP address okay somebody needs to send me a gift somebody needs to send me a data so what does B do respond all right with a unicast message reply to the sender with the physical address so the node physical address will tell oh hello a you requested my physical address here it is that's my physical address okay that's my mac address now you have it so what what does system a do it will cache this mac address and map it to the ip address why it cache it because most likely when you communicate once with any node that you're gonna communicate frequently so you don't go and request the MAC address for every packet you do it once and you cache it so now in the MAC table in here in the Ethernet table in here you'll have the IP address okay and the MAC address okay for node for node B it will have it and then the communication will continue as we explained before in chapter 3 or 4 all right so in here we're not discussing how the communication happened we are discussing how to get the physical address to be able to communicate you have to have the physical address that's all we what we are trying to say 
So that's exactly how ARM works. Okay. Uh, the request will be broadcast and um, the reply will be a unicast and then the source will have the, the logical address mapped to the the physical address as simple as this clear so far all right so now let's take a look uh, what is how is the 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 the, the ARP uh, frame look? Okay, how it will look. So exactly like we learned last week about the IP packet, there is a header and there is information. So in here, the way it looks like this: you'll have hardware type. We'll take a look at it. It will have the protocol type, the hardware length. Okay. Why hardware type? Because we said there is many different technologies. There is Ethernet, there is token bus, token ring, different technologies, Apple, whatever. Okay, different thing. Then a protocol type. All right. And the protocol type is like the upper protocol. Is it the TCP? Is coming from UDP? Coming from where? And the hardware length, because the hardware address have different sizes, and the protocol length. And operate operations. There's two types of operations: request, uh, request, uh, which is one or reply. As you see in here, request or reply, one or two. Then we have the sender hardware address. So the sender, which is A in this case, will put its hardware address, okay, which will be six bytes for the Ethernet, and the sender protocol address, which is the IP address of the sender. Now, the target hardware address, that's what we are trying to get. So all you have to put in here, put all zeros. Zero, 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 right? Zeros. Because when you send it, all right, you don't know what's the physical address of P. You need to get it, right? So you fill it with zero. And then you have the target protocol address, which is in this protocol, with this example, will be 142.23.56.23. All right, so that's the packet will be sent out. Okay, will be sent out to uh, to the destination. All right. Okay, so as you see in here, all right, it will be sent. It will be encapsulated. It will be encapsulated with the IP packet. Okay, with the frame. I'm sorry. It will be encapsulated with the frame. So as you see in here, this is the frame. Okay, which we learned IP frame packet we learned last week. Okay, so it has the source address, which is the uh, the, the hardware address, the destination address. All right, the type. What is the type? Then the RP request or replay packet, which is in here. That's here, will be included in here. Okay, all right, and then the CRC for integrity for the packet integrity. And the type it will be 0806. So the type, as you see in here, the type this one, it will be 0806. Uh, All right. So again, uh, okay. If we need to take a look at, uh, we go back in here. All right. So the hardware type. So we start with the hardware type, uh, and this is a 16-bit. This is a 16-bit packet, 16-bit uh, uh, field. And uh, uh, it will tell you the type of the of the network in which ARP is running. So each LAN um, ha has been assigned an integer based on its type. For example, it could be Ethernet, um, which is given type one. If it's one, then it's Ethernet. Uh, ARP could be used for a physical network. Then we go to the protocol type. The protocol type in here, as you see, it's a protocol type. And this is a 16-bit field, again 16-bit and 16-bit, and this 16-bit field, and it defines the protocol. Okay, so if the uh, so the value of this field could be for IP4, it will be for example uh, 0, 0800 in sexadecimal. That means it's an Ethernet, or it could be any other type. Then the hardware length again okay the 8-bit field defining the length of the physical address so for example what is the length for a mac address 48 bits all right if it if it's a different technology it might be different length all right 
and then the protocol length uh, this 8-bit field defines the length of the logical address for example if it's IP4 what will be the protocol length 32 bits if it's IP6 what will be the protocol length 128 right okay so that's what it is all right then you will have the operations the operations uh, um, uh, and again there's two types of operations either request which is one ARP request which is one or replay or reply which is uh, two all right then we'll have the sender hardware okay address if it's ethernet will be 48 bits which is six byte then we have the protocol address is four bytes for IP if it's IP6 it will be 128 and so on and so forth very easy so this data will be encapsulated so the e it will be encapsulated the AR ARP in here as you see in here it will be encapsulated the ARP packet and um, it will be encapsulated in that um, frame okay so what is the process as you see in here okay the sender uh, knows the sender knows the IP address um, address of the target it will insert it there it will know uh, and the IP ask uh, the IP uh, ask ARB to create ARB request message um, which will be in in here and will be integrated in the data all right in, in the frame sent in here and it will fill all the information and the ARB request is a broadcast as we learned before so don't forget it's a broadcast the request will be a broadcast will be received by the all machines and then after that um, uh, unicast will come back all right so ARB request is a broadcast uh, and ARB replay is a uni uh, cast there is four cases um, there's four cases uh, using ARB right so the case one a host has a packet this is the host has a packet to send to a host on the same network so there's a switch in here they are connected it needs to send the data in here okay so the target IP address the target IP address okay destination address of this uh, uh, of this device right so this is a simple scenario a switch and sell this no host does not know the physical address of that so it tries to get it the second case in here that you know a host has a packet to send to a host on another network so if it's in the another network like let's say in here it has to go through a router right so for that it has to get the physical address of the router not the destination so the target IP address will be the address of the router so what will happen first the data will go to here there's a segment and then the data goes from here the whole process starts again and goes from here to here all right the third case is um, a router to router so a router has a packet to send to a host on another network and the target so this is for example in here i mean if you need to continue from here the host is not here so this is another router all right and then connected to a switch and then connected to the host so what we see in here is what we see in here so in here that the, the router has a packet to send to a host on another network all right so in here the target IP address is the IP address of the router is the B so it's from router to another router so in here host to host host to router router to router now one more case we have which is router to where to host so the target IP address will be the destination address in the IP data graph in the IP data graph. That's the fourth case. All right. One more time. All right. So usually in the physical layer we are sending data hop to hop. Okay. Hop by hop. All right. So this is uh, this in the case one host to host, case two host to uh, to to uh, to router, 
and then router to router and then you have the router to the host in all of the cases we have to get the IP address of the destination we need to get the IP address of the destination so take a look in here at this example a host with IP address 130 you remember what the class is 130 it's B class B class B and physical address okay so this is like 32 bits if you remember because it's IP4 and this is 48 bits all right and remember we usually the IP address we write it in decimal separated by dots the MAC address we write it with hexadecimal separated by column all right so this this is the physical address and has a packet to send to another host so in here we're talking about host to host with IP address 130 23 43 25 so this is the destination that's the source from taking a look at, at it what is the the class and both of them are class B all right and we'll see the same network address you agree that means they are in the same segment in the same network so they are like this okay they are in here like this all right and the physical address for the second one is here the two hosts are on the same Ethernet network show the ARP request and replay packets encapsulation in the Ethernet so okay what what we learn in here I mean I mean this is story we learned a lot of things we have a host to host from the IP addresses we know they are class B and from the network section we know they are they are in um, same, same, network. Same. same network same segment okay and the source does not know the Ethernet address of the destination. So how this will work, okay, so in here note that ARB data field in the case is a 28 bytes and um, and um, and that the individual address do not fit in the four byte boundary. So this way we do not show regular four byte boundaries for whatever. I'm not sure what, he, what he's talking about here. But take a look in here. That's the diagram. Host to host. We have source and we have a destination in here. So the source knows this. Knows this. Knows this. Does not know this. Needs to get this. So what will happen? Look how elegant is this. So ARP request. All right. So in here one, what does it mean? Okay, what does it mean in here the one? Go back. If you forget, go back in here. Okay. Here, here, here. It's the hardware type. So Ethernet, which was still written here. So if it's Ethernet, what's the type? Is one. Then the protocol type. Protocol type. All right. Just you fill you fill out the data, right? That we learned, right? So in here you have Ethernet is 800, okay. Then what is the size of the hardware address? Six byte. What is the size of the network address? Which is four bytes, all right. And there is in here data in here. What is it in here? Okay, what is in here? The the operation. If it's one, then it's what request. If it's two, then it's re reply. So it's request. We put it one. Then we put the physical address of the source, which is in here. Okay, we'll put the logic, uh, the logical address of the source, which is in here, converted to decimal, of course. All right, this is decimal. Okay, and then we we put the 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 logical address of the destination, and because we don't know this, this is what we need to get, right? We put all zeros. We put all zeros. All right. And this packet, is it a unicast or broadcast? Broadcast. Okay, that's why we have all ifs in here. There's a broadcast address. All right, so that's a, that's a destination is a broadcast. What is the source address? Is the B2 in here. That's the source address, right? And because it's an ARB, the type will be 0806, right? And this is the data. This is the CRC, cyclic redundancy check for the integrity 
and this is a preamble and SFD for synchronization. Finito. So this packet, you see it in here, it will be broadcasted and will be received by all the nodes in the system. After that, what will happen? Re reply will happen. So the same thing, it will be the type, it will be the Ethernet, it will be the uh, Ethernet length 6 byte, it will be the IP4, which is like 132 uh, bits, and so on and so forth. Look in here what will happen. So now, now, what is the source address? Okay, see it in here? Came in here. What is the source address in here? The logical address in here. All right. And this is the destination address, which is in here. And this is the destination IP address, which is in here. And now it's in here. It was what? A broadcast. In here, it's what? Unicast. So you have a source address and you have a destination address it will be sent and now system a will receive the data will create a table for the mac okay versus the ip address and now the source will have will have it into the cache clear very simple process other thing uh, yes uh I just want to know something. For example, the message is coming from the top, from the level 7. It's going to the level 3, which is the ARP. So we know the ARP in the level 3, which is the network, is not going to be talking to the network in the other side. It's just logical. So it has to go through to the physical, so it's going to transfer to signals. So here, does the message go with the request altogether? to the other side and the replay has to come back to the or that things come separate so I'm kind of confused probably I'm... all right so the question is the data comes from here from the TCB for example right all right and then it goes to the next the next layer right okay. so 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 let's say let's say scenario one the best scenario the best scenario is this PC or this computer, okay, this PC or this computer knows the physical address of the destination. It's already in the cache, all right? So then nothing will be done with ARB. Uh, nothing, ARB will not be used because it's already have it. That's the best case scenario, right? So it will go like we learned before. Uh, uh, the, 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 it will go like this. Remember the TCP. Okay, we have a header. Okay, then it goes next to the uh, network layer, and then it goes to the next layer, and so on and so forth. There is nothing. It has it. It has the physical address. All it does in here, it will replay. It will put the source address and destination address. I meant the physical address, right? There is no issue. Now the problem is. The problem is if the data coming in here and it does not have the destination uh, physical address. Okay, what does it do? It will keep the data. It will keep the data there. It says, okay, wait, wait, wait there, wait there. Okay, I have to go somewhere else and come back to you. So what does it do? It will go and send an ARP. This is does not have the data does not have the original data. Let's say the data message coming in here, I love a bridge board. It will stay somewhere somewhere in here, stored. And then this layer, what does it do? Okay, it will hire a taxi, yellow cab, which is pink cab in here, called ARP, to go and get the physical address. All right? So now to it will, will it create another frame, which is ARP packet. It will send it to the, the destination, to, to, to the local network, it will get the physical address, then it will go to the frame in here and insert the physical address. So it will be two communications in here. One communication to get the, the, the destination uh, physical address, and the other communication is like normal. Got it? Yeah, I got it. No, yeah, I was confused before. Yeah. All right, so there will be two communications. So it's again, let me repeat what will happen. So let's say this PC 
has the destination uh, MAC address. ARP is out of the picture. It will not be used. So the data is going to come from application layer, and then it goes to the TCP layer or transport layer, then it goes to the network layer, then it goes to the data link layer, to the physical layer, and everything normal because it has already the destination address. If it does not, it receives the data and put it in a shelf for a second. It says, okay, wait. I have to go get, I have to grab the physical address of the destination. All right? I have a servant working for me called ARP. All right? It's a car. So the ARP packet will be sent to the broadcast. It will get the destination address. It takes the destination address and plug it in that frame and sends it out. All right? So will be two uh, communications. All right. All right. Okay. Then here ATM ARP. Uh, let's uh, let's not.